can something fly thousands of hours before it takes off? The U.S. Air Force's new B-21 Raider stealth bomber is one step closer to its first flight, with the start of engine test runs on the ground just being announced today. However, as the aircraft achieves new milestones, it is worth remembering that it is actually just a part, clearly the most visible one, of a family of systems. The most exciting capabilities this family has to offer likely remain well hidden from view, and some will not even be found anywhere on the plane itself. Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall opened up a bit to us about this shadowy realm of the B-21 program during a media roundtable yesterday at the Air and Space Forces Association's main annual symposium. Kendall said the long-range strike family includes systems that will be integrated with the aircraft, like weapons and sensors, and ones that will accompany it. Descriptions of the latter category seem to, at least in part, allude to the existence of one or more additional very advanced aircraft designs, very likely stealthy and uncrewed, which may already be in service on some level, although Kendall did not discuss it. Kendall also elaborated on how Raiders might work together with future advanced drones with high degrees of autonomy that be acquired through the Collaborative Combat Aircraft CCA program. That effort is part of the service's larger next-generation air dominance, NGAD modernization initiative that is also built around a family of systems. The B-21 and the strategically focused long-range strike ecosystem will complement the tactical-focused NGAD and vice versa, and work is being done to allow the two ecosystems will mesh together wherever possible. Though not often discussed, that the B-21 would be just one component of a larger directly integrated ecosystem since the Air Force first began talking about programs that would lead to the Raiders development back in the late 2000s. The B-21 effort was originally called the Long Range Strike Bomber LRSB program, which was a part of what was described at the time as a long range strike family of systems. The nuclear armed and stealthy long range standoff LRSO cruise missile which B-21 and B-52 bombers will be able to employ, is another known component of the larger LRS effort. Now designated the AGM-181, the LRSO is set to replace the Air Force's existing AGM-86B air-launched nuclear cruise missile. Other weapon systems, including directed energy weapons, have also been mentioned in the past as part of the LRS family of systems concept, this all fits in with Kendall's mention of munitions as part of the future B-21 family of systems. Directed energy weapons like lasers could be among the future onboard defensive capabilities he highlighted, which might also include things like advanced electronic warfare systems and decoys, or even hard kill interceptors. The Raider was built with an open systems architecture, which makes it highly adaptable. So as the United States continues to innovate, this bomber will be able to defend our country with new weapons that haven't even been invented yet. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin had also said at the B-21's public rollout ceremony last December. The B-21 is multifunctional. It can handle anything from gathering intel to battle management. The B-21 could be the delivery platform for precision ordnance, or there could be other roles that it could play, whether it be sensor or whether it be a company with different types of collaborative combat aircraft. Air Force Vice Chief of Staff Gen. David Alvin told Air and Space Force magazine last year. It has the capability to do some very unique things, and those unique things may not fall into the traditional put bombs in the bomb bay. Go as deep as you can, and drop bombs, playbook. That being said, the PAEA and PISR elements in particular have long pointed to the possible existence of entirely separate aircraft. At the same time, there have been growing signs for some time now that a high-altitude stealth spy drone, referred to commonly as the RQ-180, is close to entering service, if it hasn't already on at least a limited basis. From what has been gleaned over the years, the RQ-180 would be well-suited to the PAEA role, as well as the PSR and other mission sets, and could be an ideal enabler for the B-21. Further variants or derivatives of the RQ-180 could be better optimized for any of these functions as well. These are all things that the war zone has speculated on in the past. The RQ-180 
widely understood to be another Northrop Grumman flying wing type design, may also have played a role in risk reduction efforts in support of the Raiders' development. Other aircraft designs could well be part of the B-21 family of systems. It is known that the Air Force actively considered, but ultimately abandoned plans for an uncrewed bomber-like aircraft that would have operated closely in concert with the B-21, something Secretary Kendall noted again yesterday. When we started the operational imperatives, we thought initially that we might find a good cost-effectiveness case for dedicated uncrewed collaborative combat aircraft that would accompany the B-21, Kendall said. That didn't turn out to be the case as we got into the analysis. The Air Force is still exploring how its current vision for how it will employ CCAs, primarily in close coordination with crewed tactical jets in various roles, might extend to collaboration with the Raider. The kind of scenario just described is a possibility where basically the B-21 picks up CCAs as it gets closer to the operating area, Kendall said at the roundtable yesterday. The CCAs could be managed forward if you penetrate as augmentation to the B-21. They could provide defensive capability around the B-21. They could provide better situational awareness, potentially, for the B-21. The kind of off-board defensive capability that Kendall is describing here could be a loyal wingman-type drone or something more novel. The Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, currently has a program called Longshot that is exploring the idea of an air-launchable drone armed with air-to-air -air missiles that fighters and bombers could employ. General Atomics just won a contract to actually build and test fly a prototype Longshot design. The more we learn about the idea of the CCAs and how it can fit into our operating context, the more interesting and appealing it becomes, Kendall continued, speaking more generally. That's one of the reasons somebody mentioned earlier the excitement about it. There's reason to be excited about it. It offers a lot of really interesting technical possibilities. The Secretary had made a splash in March when he announced that the Air Force was planning around the acquisition of at least 1,000 CCAs as well as 206th generation stealthy crewed combat jets as part of a separate NGAD SA program. At that time, Kendall explained that the 1000 CTA figure was based on a notional concept of operations involving two of the drones being paired with each of the 200 NGAD combat jets and 300 F-35A Joint Strike Fighters. He subsequently explained that the total planned size of this drone fleet and ideas for how they might be employed were still evolving. The CCA program looks set to see fierce competition from many different companies. Top-tier U.S. defense contractors like Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, Boeing, and Raytheon have already laid out visions, explicitly or implicitly, for how they might meet the Air Force's requirements in this regard. When it comes to the B-21 and its family of systems, more details emerge as the program moves along. At the same time, the Raider and much about it is currently highly classified and parts of it will remain that way for many years to come. Given its critical centrality in the Air Force's future operational vision, especially when it comes to deterring China. As it stands now, the Air Force is still hoping that the B-21's first flight will occur later this year and Raiders will begin entering operational service in the mid-2020s. We're still hopeful on having first flight this year, Secretary Kendall said yesterday, but immediately hedged his position. If I were to say it will, I would be making a very specific prediction. And I never do that about an acquisition program for something that hasn't happened yet. What we do know is that the B-21 will be much more than we can see on the outside of the bomber, and far more than just the aircraft itself, to include possibly multiple tiers of uncrewed companions. If you enjoy content like this, please go ahead and like and subscribe to this video, because I appreciate all your support.